have a wonderful ovation. Yes, this is Johnny Olsen in New York City for Red Goose Shoes once again, and this is it. This is the day we've all been waiting for, the day you're going to meet the Kid of the Year. And our show today will feature some of the most talented youngsters that we've ever had on Kids and Company. Right, Red Goose? <laughs> so let's get going with a group that began its TV career right here on Kids and Company and is really heading for stardom. Bobby Orthons and the Mambo Aces. Mambo Aces, I like that nice little extra encore business. You know, just like going around your neck here, Red Goose, you know, like we used to around the baseball bat. Say, we'll be watching for you kids on the Ken Murray Show tonight, too. What a wonderful, wonderful gang. Oh, by the way, each of the kids who appear on Kids and Company get the Hellbros watches, you know. For the fellas, we have the Hellbros Invincible, 17 jewels, watertight, shockproof, and all that. And the girls get this very, very beautiful Hellbros Bernice. This is accurate as it is beautiful. And, oh, by the way, the Mambo Aces told me that they would like to have their Hellbros watches for their mothers. We're very, very happy to oblige, fellas, and I like your spirit. Say, what else do we have for the kids, Red Goose? A pair of Red Goose shoes. <laughs> yes, and besides that? A United States defense bond. <laughs> That's right, a stake in the future of our country. That is, each act on the show gets a U.S. defense bond. And, by the way, be watching later on in the show because the kid of the year is going to receive a $1,000 U.S. defense bond. So be watching to find out who's going to receive it. Hey, wait a minute there, young lady. Where are you off to? Aha, a picnic, is it? Well, before you go, let's have a look at that pretty pair of red goose shoes you're wearing. Say, this good-looking sandal is made of soft, white, elk-finished leather. And notice that fancy two-buckle band. And we just know you'll like the smart, wide wedge heel and the platform sole. Tell Mother and Dad that you'd like to stop by to see your friendly Red Goose dealer today. And he'll show you the shoe that's worn by our cute little model right here on Kids and Company, as well as many other wonderful Red Goose shoes for active boys and girls. Wonderful Red Goose long-wearing shoes. And always remember... It's the fun of having feet in wearing Red Goose shoes. Red Goose, you are so right. Oh, I have a lot of 
fun with my kids here on Kids and Company. And now, number two in our all-star lineup today, a young man we've had a lot of letters about. He's national junior champion baton twirler. He's from Bridgeport, Connecticut. He's eight years young, and here he is, Mark Adeletta. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Mark Adeletta. What a lot of talent that boy has. Say, by the way, do you remember last week our kid of the week, little Joseph Fogel from down there in uh, Bucks Lodge, Maryland? Well, Joseph told us the story of a fire that destroyed their home completely and how he saved the life of his mother, of his real tiny little baby brother, and his other two brothers who had become overcome with the smoke. Well, after saving their lives, the home was completely destroyed, and of course, uh, his father is a farmer. He's working out on the farm. Their home was all gone. They had to set up temporary living quarters, and they've been living in chicken brooders out there trying to get along. And as Joseph said on the program last week, we've been getting plenty of clothes, but he said we don't have any furniture for the home as yet. They're a wonderful, wonderful family. And I thought it'd be kind of nice if I were to go on strike at Rich with Warren Hall this coming Wednesday night and see if I couldn't sort of help out a little bit at that jackpot with the helping hand there and maybe help Joseph and his folks along. So be watching, won't you, on Wednesday night, and let's see if we can't give a helping hand to a youngster, a real fine American, who also gave out with a helping hand when tragedy struck. Joseph Fogel. <laughs> Coming up next on Kids and Company, it's a pleasure to welcome back one of the finest young pianists that I've ever heard play, and I'm sure you're going to agree when you see him today. He's Boogie Woogie Bruce, better known as Bruce Stieg, playing the Saber Dance Boogie. <laughs>
Carlos. Nice to have you with us once again at Kids and Company. Well, this week, kids, our salute goes out to all of the kids all over America, and especially to shut-in youngsters that we haven't been able to salute personally as we do each week at Kids and Company. And if Kids and Company has done nothing else, we hope that we've, well, sort of stirred up interest enough in the youth of America at large to make folks realize that kids are pretty wonderful people. God bless you, each and every one of you. Our salute of the week. Well, let's get some more hey bob a rebop hey bob a rebop with some fast stepping now by the trainer trio. Ruth Randall, Sheila Grant, Ray Richards, and my favorite, Honey Suckle Rose.
that's America to me. And by way of introduction to the Kid of the Year, I'd like to read you the citation that appears on the Kid of the Week plaque. It says, in recognition of his exemplary and outstanding accomplishments in having demonstrated strength of character to live his life in accordance with the American way, may his deeds set a high standard for all persons to follow. This citation is the standard by which our nine judges voted for their choice of the kid of the year. And among the youngsters they had to choose from were... Eddie Dvorak of Peoria, Pennsylvania, our first kid of the week, an honor he earned for devoting his time to reading to the blind veterans at the Valley Forge Army Hospital and working with the blind children at the local school for the sightless. Alan Crump of Pittsburgh, an explorer scout who put to good use his lessons in life-saving when a member of his fishing party fell overboard and would have drowned but for Alan's dramatic rescue. Veronica Makowski, our youngest kid of the week and also the youngest person ever to be awarded the ASPCA Gold Medal for Life-Saving. And there's her dog, Brownie, that she ran into a burning building to save. Henry Hammersley of Dayton, Ohio, who four times raced out in the thin ice of Twin Lakes to pull floundering children from the freezing waters. Richard Everett of Reno, Pennsylvania, receiving from Dr. Ralph Bunch the plaque awarded him for saving his mother's life by drawing out the poison of a diamondback rattlesnake from her foot. Billy Kopanis of St. Louis, who saved the life of a five-year-old girl when a fire in a vacant lot got out of hand and nearly burned her to death. Johnny Howe of Wellesley, Massachusetts, an alert Boy Scout who reported a break in a main railroad line in time to prevent a disaster that might have cost a hundred lives. Johnny Sherrod, a hero from the nation's capital and one of the youngest persons ever to receive the Carnegie Foundation's Heroism Award for Life Saving. Jimmy Fredrickson, whose courage earned him the title Boy Mayor of Camden, New Jersey for 1951. An exploding paint can set fire to a friend's clothes and Jimmy beat out the flames with his bare hands. Parker Strat of Coral Gables, Florida, who fearlessly waded into a quarry pool to pull his young girlfriend from the snapping jaws of a seven-foot alligator. Then there was Billy Stieber, who never had a life-saving lesson, yet dramatically saved his nine-year-old cousin from drowning when their homemade raft capsized. Billy Dunbar and Buddy Brinson from Annapolis, Maryland, together rescued a little boy who had wandered into a swamp and was hip deep in quicksand. Wanda Babbitt of Allegan, Michigan, who risked her life in a blizzard to carry a six-year-old polio victim to the safety of a farmhouse. Stadler Meckel, who remembered a first aid lesson when he found a little girl with her foot badly cut open from a sharp rock. Doctors gave him credit for saving her life. And who could forget Charlene Schaefer, a 12-year-old polio victim who hasn't time to feel sorry for herself because she's too busy helping others and soliciting funds for the Miami Valley polio campaign. Joan Clegg, who broke up an attempted robbery in her home when two armed men forced their way to the front door. Ladies and gentlemen, from all of these kids of the week and more, the Board of Judges picked the Kid of the Year, a 13-year-old boy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, who conquered a crippling disease, spinal tuberculosis, and went on to become the official mascot of the CBs. His own personal efforts resulted in getting 8,000 pints of blood for the Pittsburgh Red Cross. For all of his deeds, the judges have named 1952's Kid of the Year, Jimmy Carrick of Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Congratulations, Jimmy Carrick. It's a real, real honor and a great, great pleasure to have you with us today. And now that you're the kid of the year, I know how proud and happy you are, right, Jimmy? Yes, sir. And there's somebody standing beside you that probably is even a little bit prouder and a little bit happier than you are, and that's your mother, probably the proudest mother in all of America, right today, Mrs. Lewis Carrick of Pittsburgh. Kids and Company Red Goose for this great honor. Well, it's a great, great honor. This is your only child, Mrs. Carrick? Yes. And I the know that one. you're very, very proud of Jimmy. It's a real accomplishment. Ladies and gentlemen, you know what a time Jimmy had. He faced death many, many times with the many operations that were necessary, the many pieces of bone that were grafted, taken from his leg and placed in his spine so that he could live on and do the marvelous things that he has done. And he's been such an inspiration. Gee, all the time that he was having such a tough time of it, he was an inspiration to all the other patients there at the hospital. And believe me, he came through with flying colors. This, this is the youth of America. So when you hear people talk about how bad things are with kids, juvenile delinquents and all that, let's not only play up the bad, let's play up the good. Kids like Jimmy Carrick. Jimmy, we're very proud of you. God bless you, huh? 
And Jimmy, we have with us today to present you with probably the most luscious trophy that you have ever in your life seen. It is a honey. We have with us the President of the United States Junior Chamber of Commerce. It comes all the way from Waynesboro, Georgia. And you mothers out there, you're going to see a handsome man right now. We get him on Kids and Company, right, Jimmy? <laughs> Here he is, the President of the United States JCs, Mr. Lee Price, Jr. Jimmy, on behalf of 2,100 United States Junior Chamber of Commerce chapters and those cities of America, I present this J.C. Kid of the Year for 1952 to you. We do it, Jimmy, because of your courage, because we think that you are a great American. You are the answer to the future. And I hope that all of the young boys and girls all over America who are watching this program will get a great deal of inspiration out of what you've done and will follow your leadership. Thank you and congratulations. Thank you, Mr. Price. Jimmy, I know that you have something you want to say to Mr. Price, haven't you? I want to thank you, Mr. Price, and all the fine gentlemen that voted for me. And I will try to live up to um, my... Um, the kid of the week that uh, has been bestowed upon me. Thank you very much, sir. You're a good speaker, Jimmy. You did very well, didn't you, Lee? <laughs> hey, you know, you've got this wonderful trophy now from the United States Junior Chamber of Commerce. And, of course, our sponsor, Red Goose Shoes. You know how nice they are. We've been working for them for 39 long weeks now and looking forward to our next, next session come another 10-week little hiatus here. But... There's a Greyhound bus standing right by now, and Red Goose Shoes and its uh, president of the International Shoe Company, Mr. Edgar Rand, have arranged for you to really have yourself a time. Look at this ticket right here. Get a look. At Is that a ticket, kids? How about that? We're going to drape that all the way around Jimmy Carrick here because he and his mother are going on a coast-to-coast -coast tour via Greyhound bus lines all the way from New York to California and back up again by a different route. And all along the way, wherever you stop, the United States Junior Chamber of Commerce will see to it, won't they, Mr. Price, that the local chapters yes. stop by and greet Jimmy and show them a little bit of their towns. Is that going to be a thrill for you? Oh, mm -hmm. yes, sir. Well, you drop us a line along the way so we'll know how you're getting along on that Greyhound. And now, something else from Red Goose Shoes. This I know you've been looking forward to. It's with a great deal of pleasure and honor that we present to you a United States defense bond in the amount of $1,000. And that ought to help you to really Incidentally, Jimmy Carrick is going to be on Ed Sullivan's Toast of the Town on Sunday night. And I'm going to be there to give a look-see, too, to see that everything goes all right. Ed has done a wonderful, wonderful lot of things for children, and I know that you'll get a good thrill out of, out of meeting him. And the really top all thrills of thrills, you're going to visit Washington, D.C., of course, Jimmy. And we have arranged for you to meet in person the President of the United States, on June the 4th. Won't that be a thrill to meet President Truman? Yes, sir. You bet your life. Well, Jimmy, that just about does it. And Mr. Price, I know that the J.C.s who have been cooperating with us so nobly have done so many wonderful things for children. And this, of course, is your number one project of the year, right? That's correct. You number bet. one for the year. Well, Jimmy, I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful trip and that you uh, certainly will come back and see us when you get back from the trip all around the country, Mrs. Carrick. Say, why don't we bring the whole cast on here now you know, we're going to be taking a little vacation. All kids have to have vacations, and we're just grown-up <laughs> kids at heart. Right, Jimmy? Yes. So we're going to be back with Red Goose Shoes just 10 weeks from now, August the 9th. So consult your newspaper for Time and Channel and be watching, won't you? Now, what do you say if we get everybody together here, and may I thank the entire crew who have been so nice to us working all these many, many weeks, all those connected with our show, and, of course, our director, Pat Faye. Let's all start singing a little bit of old Lang Syne. What do you say, Cass? Let's all join in. Everybody. 